Hello, everyone, and welcome back for our afternoon sessions. Thank you all for being here. Hope you had amazing lunch, and now it's time for some new social media. So we have with us Hannah Goldberg, who is an expert, has more than one million followers on TikTok. So I think it's time to learn something from the best sailing TikToker in the world. Please join me and welcome Hannah Goldberg. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So, let me set that down. Welcome. Thank you for coming to this today. So today, I'm going to be talking to you about social media marketing strategy and focusing on the charter industry. And basically, well, so I'll just go over what we're going to cover today. Um, we're going to do an introduction to social media marketing. We'll talk about why you should be focusing more on social media marketing as a business. We're going to talk about increasing Instagram followers, and then we're going to talk about a strategy focused on conversion. So a conversion strategy is focused on getting followers and viewers to become clients. And then we're going to talk about TikTok, increasing TikTok followers, and the strategy that we're going to talk about there is the three TikTok strategy. Um, we'll go into that deeper. Then we're going to talk about the back end a bit, analytics, and then boosting posts, putting some paid funding behind your posts and how that can be beneficial to you. And then we'll finish it off with social media marketing tools. Um, and I'll tell this quote, which is, we are one of the fastest moving industries in the world by Michael Selzner. And I feel like this is a really important quote because social media is changing every single day and it is extremely fast paced, which makes it kind of hard to keep up with sometimes. And it's just constantly changing and growing. And so this is something that we need to consider as we move forward with our businesses. Um, social media is an incredible tool because you can connect with people literally all over the world. And that is like an incredible tool that you should really, really be utilizing for your company. So what is social media marketing and why should companies be taking it more seriously? So social media marketing covers increasing website traffic, increasing engagement, and brand awareness. So increasing website traffic is a little bit self-explanatory. We want people to go from your social media and have a, an experience on that platform where it can easily bring them into your website, where they learn just enough to get them interested, but the website is where they're going to get all the information and where they're going to become a client. Increasing engagement is just going to bring eyes to your post. It's going to bring eyes to your company. And then that is going to convert into clients. And brand awareness. We want people to be familiar with your brand. You want people to know who you are based off of your online presence. And that will give you an advantage in this industry. So why should companies be taking social media marketing more seriously? Well, there's. 5 billion internet users in the world in 2022, that is 64% of the world population. And 59% of those of the world population, 4.7 billion people are social media users. So this is an incredibly large group of people that are online. Why wouldn't you be taking advantage of having your company have the eyes of all of these people, billions of people, millions, opportunity to go viral and you know gain gain that exposure. So about me, um, I've been a social media manager for four years. I've built my business on helping businesses convert on social media. So through like deep obsession and understanding with online communities, online um, experiences and patterns, I've, I quit my job in, uh, I worked in Los Angeles at a a doctor's office and I did their social media management and I quit that job pursuing doing social media on my own. I started gaining clients and in order to prove uh, the effectiveness of growth and proof of strategy, I decided to document my own journey because I was doing my work alongside of sailing. Um, my 
passion with social media went hand in hand with my passion for sailing, and I wanted to find a way to combine the two. So I decided to start documenting my journey, and um, my first video that I ever posted got over 28 million views, and I started gaining followers really, like, extremely rapidly, and I continued to grow this page um, and continued to spread awareness to sailing and also doing social media management alongside that. And it, people may ha like look at something like this and think that it's just algorithm or it's just luck, but in reality, it actually is a lot of strategy and, and thought that goes behind each post and each, um, and each thing that I put out online. So that's what I want to help you do and what I want to talk about today. So we're going to start with um, Instagram. And with Instagram, it's important to understand the algorithm. The algorithm for each social media platform is totally different, which makes it even more confusing for you, for you and everyone, for businesses. But it's, with Instagram, we, they push out your content to about 10% of the people who are already following you. So Instagram is really a platform that is for people that follow you, retention of followers, and it's not really a place where you're going to expect massive growth. Um, Instagram is a place where we want to create a platform that will give the user experience, um, kind of mimicking your website experience. This is um, my strategy to capitalize on Instagram is I feel like this is how a page should look, is specifically in the charter industry or for a business. So this is a um, example of an Instagram account for an ice expedition, ice axe expeditions, and it's a sailing charter company, and they do sailing and skiing. And if, when you look at their account, everything is extremely streamlined. We have a optimized bio, which like with a tagline, it lets you know who they are, and immediately there's a link to their website. It's very clear and very concise. The branding is consistent throughout. We have a um, profile picture, which is consistent throughout the rest of the page. And then we have story highlights with specifically telling you what you're going to see in each highlight. So this is, and then what we're going to have is basically, um, then you're going to have a grid. Besides like the bio and the profile picture and the highlights, then you're going to have your grid. And these are going to be static posts. Um, in your static posts, you can really use, do anything. There's going to be, you could do graphics, you can do photos, but it's really a way for you to, for example, if you see in the top left corner, um, this is a post that they've done where they do a specific guide and then they say the dates and they say click the link in the bio so that you can book the trip. So it's really, you can use it for anything that you want to announce. I've seen a lot of different, it's used for a lot of different ways. And then, um, for ex so this is not something that you're going to be posting where you're thinking, oh, this is going to ha help me grow. I'm going to grow from this post. This is just to give information. And then, for example, this is a content creator who worked with this uh, company, and she did a partnership with them. She's tagged them, and you can see on their post, they've gotten 90 likes, which is incredible reach for your company, but for her, she's gotten on this video over 100,000 views and thousands of likes and a lot of engagement, and all the people who follow her are people who relate to her lifestyle, live a similar lifestyle, and they will find her, your page or their page, whatever it may be, through partnerships, something like that. So um, that's, that's basically what I want you to take away from the Instagram algorithm is we're using Instagram to mimic our website in a way. Instagram should be used to be a streamlined experience. And then, because when people are checking out a business, what do they check out right away? They check out social media. So they're going to go to your social media, and that's going to lead you to, they're going to lead people to your website. And um, I'm just going to take a sip of water. OK, so. Next, I'm going to talk specifically about the conversion strategy. So instead of creating content on Instagram specifically for Instagram that you want to go viral, your energy should be on building 
communities and focus on converting followers into clients. And the way that this conversion strategy looks will be daily stories, featured posts, and weekly reels. So I'll start with daily stories. The stories are not for building a following. Stories are for your followers, and these are people who are already familiar with your brand. Maybe they've been thinking about doing a charter for a long time. Maybe they've been thinking about joining. Maybe they've already joined, but these are your community members, and they need to be the most well taken care of because they are consistently coming back, and that word of mouth, all of that is the best way for it to spread for you. Um, and the daily stories also will be able to be kept in your story highlights. So this is something that it will disappear right away, but you can continue to keep it on your profile long term. Um, featured posts are those static posts that we were talking about. Um, they can cover a variety of topics uh, for your content. So this to these topics can be upcoming events, they can be changes in schedules, they can be changes of locations, really anything that you want to announce to your community, to your followers. And the featured posts, like I said, it's not you're not going to expect massive growth, but this is a really, really great way for you to connect with your community directly because with social, with social media, it's an incredible tool for you to directly speak to your customer base where you won't be able to have that experience on your website. People are not visiting your website to get these instant type of announcements. And when it comes to feature posts, it's a great way to do that. For example, like just this morning, I saw this ski resort that I went to growing up all my life, and they made an announcement saying that a lot of the ski lifts were closed because of a massive storm they had. And some of the comments were saying, wow, this is incredible that we can get this information out to thousands of people where 20 years ago, there was a similar situation where there was a flood of people screaming at employees. And it's just an incredible way for you to speak directly to your community. And weekly reels. This is the place where you're going to be able to like dive deeper into your core topics and where you're going to really have the chance for growth on Instagram. So the weekly reels is... Yeah, that is where you're going to reach new audiences. And when you have your featured posts that are important announcements, you can pin those to the top of your profile so that they don't move as you continue to create new content and build a following. Um, with weekly reels, you also don't need to have those in your feed if you don't want to. They can live um, in this middle section. So when you are on Instagram, if you click into the middle section, that's where reels would be. And you can completely separate all of it how you want to. So now I'll talk about TikTok. So TikTok um, is the new social media. Everyone is very intimidated by TikTok. You know, they have assumptions about it. Um, but like, release what your ideas of TikTok are, like release what you think that you should be doing on there and focus on it as a marketing tool. Um, so really the future of social media is video. Every single social media platform has a made announcement and made it clear that they will be prioritizing video content. You don't wanna say, oh, I wanna change that, I'll do something different because we just kind of have to accept when they're, the, the bosses are, they're in charge and they're controlling the algorithm and we have to kind of like go with it sometimes. So there are ways that you can grow on TikTok and that you can use this to your advantage. Um, so ways that I would recommend that you can start to grow on TikTok is partnerships. Um, as I spoke about before, you know, that the woman who's a content creator, she helps helped us, the social media platform and creating a mutually beneficial partnership will, can involve content creators, guests, um, and there's so many different ways that you can do that. So when you're not busy with bookings, maybe have a couple days where you do a partnership or a collaboration with someone and also having invite your guests to create content when you're focusing on a charter you know maybe you have a captain and a stewardess and you have um, a deckhand and everyone is doing their roles and they're busy with their work and content creation is not the primary focus and 
but the people who are making content, you can rely on your guests. They'll be definitely taking pictures of their vacation. They're gonna want to see themselves on your page. They, especially if they found you through social media, they'll love to see themselves as part of it. So finding ways to kind of involve your guests and involve people with the whole process, it makes it fun. It's, people love to see that and they love to be involved with it. So another, um, asset that you can use is a social media assistant. Um, they can work on managing content, planning and strategy, posting, copywriting, filming, editing. Um, there's a lot of travelers in the world um, living a nomadic lifestyle, living an alternative lifestyle who would love, who, uh, who do work exchanges. They volunteer their work in exchange for accommodation and food. So this is something that I have done as well while traveling and it's a great way to meet new people, share your skills. And if you don't have those social media skills, a lot of young people are very committed to their social media presence. And using someone like that, they can be either on board, they can also, you can hire someone who's maybe working remotely for you. And that person can be on the back end, you can send them content, they can do the editing for you, they can do the strategy for you, and you won't have to focus on it because there's a lot more that you have to focus on as a company. So, now this is gonna, I'll, these are three examples of like TikTok accounts that I put up here, and we have the Yacht Week that I'm sure, you know, maybe a lot of you are familiar with because in Croatia, and they do a great job on TikTok because they create content that's relatable in many, many ways. They create content that's comedic and also aesthetic and it, it has a really good variety. Plus they're pinning videos to the top of their profile that are important. And there's other types of video creators that are giving a behind the scenes look on what it's like to live on a boat, what it's like to work on a boat. Um, this can go from cruisers to actual people who are on a crew who just create their own content. And all of this can be like beneficial in, in many ways. So the um, three TikTok strategy is, this is a strategy that I have used to help grow many different platforms, either businesses or individuals. Um, some, so the first type of video that you'll want to create will be something trending. So following trends, um, there's always a new trend every day and it is hard to keep up with them all. So find trends that resonate with your brand and your company. Don't try and follow every single trend. It's not, it's, they will help you go viral, but sometimes trends don't lead to retention or to conversion because someone will see that and they'll think, oh, that's cute and they'll continue scrolling. But what can be valuable with doing some mixture of trending content and trending sounds is that you'll be able to draw people to your profile, which then you will pin on the top of your profile the content that is valuable for people to know. That you don't want to pin on top of your profile maybe your most viral content. Like, I'm not, on my page, I will never pin my most viral videos. I'll never pin the trending videos. I'll pin my most asked questions and what people really wanna know when they come to your profile, you want them to be able to find that really easily. And um, yeah, making sure that you're on top of what's trending is a huge part of social media. You need to not only just be posting, you need to understand it and that's just part it's part of how it goes. Um, the next videos will be speaking TikTok videos. So the speaking videos will allow you to dive deeper into your core topics and really connect with your followers. Um, this can be done in many ways. You can speak directly to the camera. You can do a voiceover. Um, I've really found that the best way to connect with people through video is through speaking videos. So make sure that if you are gonna do this, that it's not just videos with text or videos of montages, you know, really incorporate speaking and who you are. Um, and the third will be repurposed content. So this can be used in many different ways across many different platforms and that would be along the lines of content from partnerships, content from clients. Um, there, it can be used in 
it's minimal effort, and you can use it across platforms. So you really want to be um, continually testing what works. Do what works, continue to do what works, and when it doesn't work, stop doing some of that stuff and continue testing. Like, as I said, social media is constantly, constantly changing, and it's really fast-paced, so it's always, you're always testing things. And the more you are testing and studying and seeing what works, the better that you will continue to perform. And the main thing about this strategy is variety. Like, variety is key for growth. And that is the like, main takeaway when it comes to creating videos, is you really have to give people a variety. Um, so yeah, this, this, this strategy is what I recommend if you were trying to grow. If I was going to start from nothing and I was going to start growing a page, this is what I would do. And you can post them. I would post as much as you can for, to start. But once you've found your voice and you've found that brand awareness and that voice, then you can continue to do what works for you and what people are kind of reacting to well. But that takes time to learn what people are like liking about your videos. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk more about creating videos, which is my favorite topic because I really, really love creating videos. And the thing is, in order to do well with creating videos, you actually have to love it. And if you don't love it, then find someone who loves it, who wants to do it, or who can help you because we all love to hate social media. Like, everyone loves to hate social media. It's like, you know, it, but I shamelessly love it because I've connected and I've changed my whole life because of, because of it. And the thing is that you have to consume social media in order to do it well. And that is just, unfortunately, the truth about it. And you can't expect to do well if you don't kind of love what you're putting out. Uh, you have to really put that care behind the videos that you're making. And um, creating videos, it can be a little more complex than it seems sometimes. When you're scrolling on social media and you watch a video, it can look like it took someone two seconds to make because it, watched, it took you two seconds to watch, you know? But the value that you're getting from it, what you're not seeing is what was put behind it. And it's, it's a process. It's unfortunately more than just picking up a camera, taking a quick shot, stitching a few videos together, and adding a trending sound. There is a lot more that goes into creating a social media, like such as creating a script, and creating a story. So this is my strategy for, that, I help, that I like to recommend to people for creating videos. Um, first thing that I'll talk about is behind the scenes. Like, People really, really love behind the scenes content, like create through process, show your followers an insight into the behind the scenes of what your boat life is like, what your charter life is like. Um, Pete, you know what it's like to live and work on a boat. You know what it's like because it's your life day to day. But the fact that you can even live on a boat and charter a boat, sometimes it's really new to a lot of people. It literally blows people's mind that this is even a possibility. So they want to know the behind the scenes. They don't want to just like see a beautiful table setting at a, on a charter boat. They want to see like how you put that whole thing together. They want to see the process. And that's what I mean when I say create through process. Don't just show the end result. Show the full process. You know, you can, this can be done in many different ways. You can, you can show people, you know, what, what we see versus what you see. How do we prepare a charter? What, how do we prepare the boat before you come? There's a lot of different ways that you can do behind the scenes. And um, when people think of TikTok, they think of, you know, dances and trends and stuff like this. But uh, the, this is not what TikTok is. Um, I'm, I have never done a TikTok dance, you know, and I don't plan to ever do a TikTok dance. And you don't have to do that, and you shouldn't be thinking about doing that because it has nothing to do with your brand. So 
you should not be thinking about following all this trend and this one and you know having your crew learn a dance and because it's just not going to resonate with the way that you want it to which is what our goal is as i said is conversion we're trying to convert to clients so when someone is scrolling maybe they'll see a video of your crew dancing and they'll think that's cute but they're going to continue scrolling and it's not going to represent who you are as a brand so find those trends that do resonate with your brand and that do contribute to who you are but mostly behind the scenes and showing you know if i like to say like if you think about the show below deck you know this is an incredibly popular reality show and they follow the crew of say like yacht charters they follow the crew's life because this is what people are interested in they want to know the behind the scenes they're not following the guests who are on the charter they're following the crew because this is what people care about and this is um this is where like we'll move into like storytelling so think about um a story that your followers can become invested in so that they keep coming back so that they want to return to your page they think about you when they think about yacht charter um when you have and this is where it ties in with comedy and personality so people on tiktok really love comedy and personality and a story they really like to feel connected to what they're watching um and so when you're when i when i talk about comedy and personality you want to show the personality of your crew so i don't know that can look different across all sorts of social media plat or not social media platforms it can look different across all different kinds of boats so you can have a crew that's maybe permanent or it can be changing but involve your crew in the process if you you know if someone um is you know doing something a little bit fun or entertaining have your stew you know talk through her as i said like the table setting or what she's doing to organize things and kind of show the personality of the captain because when it comes to the crew the guests want to know who you are and one of the goals with this is that when you're converting a follower or a viewer into a client when they come onto your boat or they come into your business they want like you want them to know who you are already you want them to feel like they already know you because then they feel a connection to you and that will make you stand out from all of the other thousands and thousands of options that they have because they know I'll have fun on this boat I already connect with these people and I want to be there so don't diminish yourself you may think oh it's just a regular crew or it's just a regular basic experience but really what you have what you are doing is much more unique than you think and just be genuine and give a unique perspective because no matter what you have a unique perspective every single person in the world has a unique perspective and what you're doing the way that you're living and the business that you have is incredibly unique to people so no matter who you are you have a personality you have people that love you you have and other people strangers will could feel the same way about your crew about anything and they'll want to be on your boat versus any other boat so this all ties in together with as i said the variety being key for growth you know you want behind the scenes you want to tell a story it's it all comes together and and i know it sounds like a lot there is a lot that goes into it and sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming because it really is a lot of factors and a lot of different kinds of videos across different platforms we've talked about static posts and we've talked about you know making it look like your website and then you have to do videos and but the videos go to reels and then they go to tiktok and then they go to youtube and it's just like a lot to think about so this is why i'm going to talk now about the back end of it things like tools that you can use to streamline this a little bit easier and then also um how to kind of analyze what's working what isn't working okay so analytics um and i'm going to focus on the analytics that i would give um to people who are focusing on a conversion strategy which is for businesses and not for individuals so for this conversion focused strategy the two main metrics that we're looking at are profile visits and website taps so um 
as I said, conversion means turning followers and viewers into clients. And when you're looking at your reach on Instagram, you can select a date range, you can see how many impressions you've gotten, and you can see specifically where those impressions are from. So when you're looking at reach here, well, the first thing you'll see is followers and non-followers. As you see, stories is majority followers. Like I said, story content is gonna be for people who already follow you, consistent people who are part of your community. And then posts, that will be more 50-50. Sometimes you will get new eyes on it, which is great because that is what you want. And there's specific ways that you can reach new people with those posts that I will talk about as well. And then reels, as you can see, a majority non-followers. And that is where we're gonna be gaining followers. And this is specifically for Instagram, which is the best place where you're gonna get that conversion to your website, to clients. And so for example, this is impressions for a week. And this is on not a huge account, but there's 88,000 impressions. And this is not even a busy week. 88,000 impressions, let's say this, you've posted a video that's gotten 88,000 views, and this is an individual. So the numbers will look different as a business when you're going for website taps. I've noticed that when individuals are not selling a product, not selling a service, they don't get as many website taps. But if you have these impressions, then you're gonna get profile visits around 3,000 to 5,000 profile visits. From that, you're gonna get hundreds of people clicking on your profile, maybe it's not gonna be 88,000, 100,000 people who are gonna go directly to your profile, but it's gonna be hundreds, and then that could be, that's an opportunity to get hundreds of new people clicking on your website per week. So it's kind of a given that you should really take advantage of that opportunity. So with, um, as a business, you should have a marketing budget. I'm sure many of you have a marketing budget. And I believe that um, some of this marketing budget should contribute to social media because social media is an incredible tool. It is completely free and you have the opportunity to reach those millions of eyes that we've talked about, how many social media users there are. And it's free to use, but sometimes you could spend hours of time editing and posting and finding the right hashtags and the right trends and strategies, but it doesn't reach the right audience um, and it doesn't hit and that's unfortunate, but when you have put that time and effort into a post that you wanna do well, then I recommend putting boosting posts and uh, putting some money behind that. And that's what this looks like. So what you would first do is under a post, it would say boost post, and then you will select that. And what you could do is select a goal. Here it says more profile views, more website visits or more messages and whatever you want, you can select that goal. Then you define your audience. Um, there's automatic, but I don't recommend doing automatic because you are not in control of who they're gonna send it out to. So if you create your own, there's different ways that you can find a way to specifically find your audience and make sure that your content is hitting the right eyes, people who wanna see it. And then you'll choose a duration and budget. So you can select a budget and a duration, and then it'll give you an estimated idea of how many more views you'll get, how many more likes you'll get on that post. And a lot of the times, if the content is really good and it reaches the right audience and this process is done correctly, you can far exceed that goal. So sometimes it'll say you're gonna reach 10,000 more people, but those videos could get a million plus views if, they are, if the process is done right. And um, a lot of these views, videos that you see that have a million plus views from businesses, it's not because it's just like great content, all the, I mean, yes, it is great content, but it's a mixture. They put paid, they put money behind it. It's, it's just the way that it goes and it's an advertisement and you can 
also do this across Instagram and Facebook. They're connected. Um, and I'm going to be talking about some social media tools and websites that also help with this process. So these are the social media marketing tools that um, I will that I'm talk that I was speaking about, and um, basically these tools are used for scheduling um, and for con making sure that every single all of your content can be used across all the different platforms. So as a sailor and a social media manager, I there's many times when I am not in internet access. Like, I am not able to reach internet, and I don't know when the next time I'll be able to do that. But that's when these tools have really saved my life, because I can schedule posts. I can see what they're going to look like on the feed. I can research trends and hashtags. And they really help you find those trends, find the hashtags. They analyze the effectiveness of your post. Those insights we were looking at before, this goes so much more in depth. And it makes it clearer for you to read them. They, it really, really helps you as a business. This is an incredible tool if, you're, if you have a social media manager even, that it can really, really help build your pages. Um, the process of scheduling and posting is extremely time consuming. If you're going to be posting on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever, there's how many social media platforms are there? There's way too many. And this makes it so that you can post all the one, one thing on all of them at the same time. You can write the caption. You can put your link in bio. Link in bio is an incredible tool that I specifically use later. But Hootsuite is um, better for businesses, like a whole business. You, I recommend you look at both. There's also so many others. See what works for your company. And another thing that's great about these is they also have people on the back end in their company that are there specifically to help you. So you can have direct contact with customer service and blogs and any question that you have about social media that maybe you're a little confused about, you type it into this website and they will give you an answer and an article that tells you exactly what you are looking for. And it's, I found it to be an incredible tool and I highly, highly recommend this type of scheduling tool if all of this seems overwhelming to you, which I'm sure it does, because even to me, doing it four years, uh, it's always overwhelming. And sometimes you can't keep up with it all. So this is just a really, really great way to streamline everything. And one of my favorite things about it, too, is that you can look how your feed is going to look, which I think aesthetics, when it comes to social media, is really important. When you are doing your Instagram feed, if you're planning ahead to see what it looks like, it's just, I mean, it, Planning, no matter what, is going to be helpful for whatever business, whatever thing, whatever you're trying to accomplish. So that that brings me to the end. And um, thank you so much for coming and listening. And you can follow me online, or you can email me. And if you have any questions, uh, you can come up to me as well. But I really appreciate you coming here and listening and being open-minded about social media. So thank you so much. OK, so this video is from a girl who, was, who did a partnership with a charter company. And she made a day in the life video. And what's good about this is like she has her own following. She has her own unique perspective. And the people who follow her already relate to her. They already feel connected to her in some way. So her, and she has her own like comedic value and unique perspective. So here's an example of what a partnership could look like. This is a day in the life sailing the Greek Ionian Sea with med sailors. Our skipper Phoebe set sail at the crack of dawn this morning, so when we woke up, we'd already arrived at the most beautiful secluded blue bay. Obviously, the first thing I did before anything was dive in, because how can you not? I then grabbed my mask and snorkel and said hello to the fishies. After swimming for a bit of time, Karen came along on her paddleboard and told me to hop on, so I did. We found a cool cave and some other friends from the tour. But it was time to get back to the boat because our legend of a skipper Phoebe had made us shakshuka for breakfast, which we absolutely inhaled. I then 
then tried blowing up my floaty, but it's really big, so I wasn't having much success. Luckily, one of the other boats had an air hammer, so we requested a handsome skipper to deliver it to us via paddleboard. Now I was equipped with the tool I needed, the floaty was pumped up in no time. Meet Michelle, our double seashell floaty, where we proceeded to spend the rest of the morning frolicking and gossiping about the Greek boy Karen fancies. Phoebe came in with the goods again with a delicious pesto pasta for lunch on the boat. I then had a beer, and it was time to quite literally set sail to our next stop. I was given the very important job of pulling the rope and then whisking it tight. I tell you what, it was harder work than I could have imagined, so Karen and I made ourselves a well-deserved fruit punch. Before long, we arrived in a town called Plataria, where we parked up for the night. Immediately, Karen and I headed with our laundry to this place called Costas, who do your laundry and serve banging heroes. What a combo! We then hung out our clean clothes on the side of the boat to dry. For dinner, we got a litre of wine for six euros, tzatziki, and an entire block of feta wrapped in phyllo pastry. Goodness gracious, what a way to end the day. And then we went to bed on the boat, and that was our day. Bye! Wow, she really spoke really quickly in that. Um, I should have put the <laughs> captions, but she knows what works for her followers, you know? So that's what works for her, and that's how she did her video. And um, I have an example of a behind the scenes video as well. From This is from a YouTube sailing couple, and they do This is how we mow the grass on our sailboat. Well, not TikTok. exactly, but about living on their boat. And so this is just uh, like a little bit of an example of what, an idea what you can do for behind the scenes. But basically, moss, seaweed, and barnacles lay siege to the bottom of the boat, so we regularly battle it out just beneath the surface. Here, the crystal clear Bahamian water puts our hairy, no longer white bottom on display, and I feel like that one neighbor who brings down property values in the neighborhood with their overgrown front yard. Before diving in, it starts pouring rain, so I hurry and scrub the deck, because it's free, and fresh water is a highly valued commodity out here. I haven't quite gone full Kevin Costner Waterworld yet, so today I'm using the blue Nomad. It's kind of like scuba diving, but without the tank. And between the two batteries, I should get a couple hours of air to wrestle with our unwelcomed guests. Now that I'm in the water, I use a scraper to get the barnacles to release. Considering the reproductive organ to body ratio, it's understandable why they're so hard to get off. Cleaning the bottom is usually a peaceful exercise, except today I had this creepy shadow approaching me. Turned out to just be a huge chunk of seaweed. Whew. Anyways, we try to clean the bottom every week or so to protect our home, and also, because it's a sailboat, getting rid of all that parasitic drag means we can sail a lot faster. Seems like a simple video if you know about boats and stuff, but... This video has a million plus views, and people are blown away by this process and what it's like. This behind the scenes look at things is, it really attracts people, especially on TikTok. Yes. Hi, so uh, let's say I'm a charter company that's willing to dedicate some time to creating better content uh, for social medias. Would you recommend uh, having a face to our account. Let's say um, it's gonna be me, and I will be the one creating storytelling content and putting my face up front. Or do you recommend it being everybody? Would that work better? I feel like it will vary from company to company. For some people, for some companies, it's a clear idea who that face would be. And it is, I think that yes, having a face of someone will be very valuable, but the, and it could be that voice of someone. For, but for this couple, for example, they do it both. So he's not just the face, it's also the girl. They switch back and forth. And it's good that if you do have a face and someone that you've dedicated to be that social media presence, that they also involve the other crew. And then they involve everyone else. Like people want to know, you want to kind of give an idea of the whole family or the whole crew and um, everyone who they'll be meeting. But yes, I think that having a face of a platform for social media is very, very valuable and it definitely gives um, a lot of I don't, like awareness and likeness to your company, so yeah. But yeah, those were my videos, so th that's, um, that's what I have for you today. And thank you so much for everything. <laughs>